Welcome to the FS Economy tutorial video, Understanding FSE Airport Coordinates. The first thing to understand is that FSE is flight simulator agnostic, it does not care what flight simulator you are using, as long as there is a compatible client to communicate between your simulator and FSE. Currently, several Microsoft NX plane simulators are supported. Because of this, there are many different airport databases in use by FSE players. First, there are the default databases supplied with each simulator version. Additionally, several simulator platforms update their database constantly to reflect real-world changes. And finally, all simulator users have the ability to customize their own airport database. They can add, move, and remove airports. Thus, it is impossible for the FSE airport database to exactly match the airport database you see in your simulator. You may have airports that don't exist in FSE. FSE may have airports that don't exist in your simulator. Airports that exist in both places may not have the same ICAO code. Or, some airports in FSE may exist at different geographical coordinates than what is reflected in your simulator. When FSE was designed, the decision was to use the FS9 airport database as the in-game database. There are currently no plans to update the in-game database despite several real-world changes over the years. Although players using the default FS9 simulator will have the closest matching database, you do not need to have FS9 in order to enjoy FSE. However, if you do not have FS9, you must understand the differences and how to overcome them. And that understanding can be gained from this tutorial. Let's start by reviewing the FSE Airport Coordinate System. As you can see on the FSE website, the International Airport in Seattle, Washington, has the ICAO code KSE8 in the latitude and longitude coordinates of 47.4488 north and 122.309 west. Since this is a major international airport, it is likely that all simulator platforms will match the FSE database. Your simulator communicates with the FSE server by sending the coordinates of your aircraft's location through the client and over the Internet. Other information such as the ICAO code or whether you are even at an airport are not communicated to the server. The FSE server receives the coordinates and determines your FSE location by determining the closest FSE airport within the FSE database to your simulator's transmitted coordinates. Now that you understand the mechanics of how FSE determines your location, let's examine the most common problems this can cause. By far, the most common problem, even for FS9 users, is when two or more airports are extremely close together. In this example, we are looking at the International Airport in Anchorage, Alaska. On the same property, two other airports exist, the Lakehood Float Plain Basin and the Lakehood Strip. According to Google Earth, the coordinates in the FSE database put the exact location for these three airports in the locations shown here. The resulting problem then, with the method FSE uses to determine your location by calculating the nearest coordinates, is that if you park your plane on the southeast end of the terminal building, FSE will believe that you are on the water at Lake Hood, not at the International Airport. If you just landed at Anchorage Stevens International Airport in your CRJ200, and the system placed you at Lake Hood. Your shiny new jet is now sitting in the water. Your passengers did not get off, and you did not get paid for your flight. The two hurdles with close airports is with ending your flight and attempting to start your flight. If the FSE server detects you at an airport different than what you think you are at in the simulator, the first and natural response is that something is wrong. You can see in this screenshot that I am firmly on the 24 right runway of Anchorage International, sitting in a Cessna 208, which you can see that I have rented. However, when I attempt to start my flight, the client tells me that I have no rented aircraft at Lake Hood. My first thought is, of course I don't. I'm not at Lake Hood. However, now that we understand the mechanics of how FSE determines our location, despite what we think we see out the windscreen of our airplane, FSE thinking that time at Lake Hood makes perfect sense, and now we can easily get around these two issues. The obvious answer is to relocate your aircraft to a spot on the Earth that is closer to the geographical coordinates indicated on the FSE website. If you recently landed, 
and FSP placed you at the wrong airport. You'll have to start your client at this wrong airport, take off and land again, and shut down at the correct airport. However, if you're simply trying to start your flight, and the client is telling you that you have no rented aircraft at a location in which you are sure that you are not, you can simply taxi or slew your aircraft and try again. Let's take a brief look at the other common problems encountered by all non-FS9 users, and even FS9 users who have customized their simulator's airport database so that it no longer exactly matches the FSE airport database. It is very common for airports to close in real life. Airports that existed when FS9 was built by Microsoft, but have since been decommissioned, may not show up in FSX. Likewise, X-Plane frequently updates its aircraft database to reflect the real world. A very common, and often discussed example, is Meigs Field in Chicago. For nearly 20 years, Meigs was the default startup location for the Microsoft Flight Simulator series. In 2003, Meigs Field was permanently closed down. The result is that FSX and X-Plane users do not have this field in their simulator by default. So how do these users take jobs to or from KCGX? Simple, either install downloadable scenery to enable an airfield at this location, or land or take off anywhere in the immediate vicinity. Obviously, a float plane might be best suited for this. But without realism settings, anything is possible. Your simulator will send your coordinates to the client who will pass them off to the server. The server will interpret your location as KCGX. Problem solved. But what if the problem is the other way around and you have an airport in your simulator that you want to use, but it doesn't exist in FSE? Although new airports have been developed in the real world since the authoring of the FS9 database, the most common encounter with this problem is the downloading of scenery files in especially fictitious locations. But again, now that you understand the mechanics of the FSE coordinate system, you can easily use your simulator's airports with FSE, even though those airports don't exist in FSE. This is very popular with intentional off-airport flying, such as remote wilderness cabins or offshore oil rigs, but can be just as useful for those places in real life which now have an airport that did not previously exist and is thus not in the FSE database. You simply need to know ahead of time which FSE airport FSE thinks you are at, and plan accordingly. The easiest way to do this is to place your aircraft at your simulator's airport, and click the FSE client start flight button. The error message that pops up and tells you that you have no rented aircraft will also tell you what airport FSE thinks you are at. When you are collecting assignments or looking for aircraft, Simply keep in mind that on the FSE website you are at one airport, while in your simulator you are at another. Another common problem with more recently released simulators is that IKOs have been updated to reflect real life changes. Nine times out of ten, the airport is in the exact same geographical location in your simulator as in the FSE world. However, when you finished your online FSE flight planning and job gathering, and then attempt to go to that airport where you rented your plane. Your simulator throws you a curveball by telling you that no such airport exists. There is only a problem if you're not aware of the ICAO differences. Since FSE will log you correctly, simply operate from the airport in your simulator as normal. The final problem that we will discuss is airports that were incorrectly placed in the FS9 database but fixed for FSX. X-Plane users will also see this problem when trying to operate from the incorrectly placed airport. One frequently cited example is the Tulachulitna River Airstrip, 1AK6, near PASW, in FS9. This airport was incorrectly placed just a mile to the northeast of PASW, when in reality it is located about 10 miles southwest, because the geographical coordinates in the FSE database place 1AK6 northeast of PASW. If you attempt to land at Dolichulitna in your simulator, FSE will place you at PASW. Instead, you must operate from the river or in the woods to the north and northwest of PASW. Hopefully, this tutorial has shown you that any flight simulator can use the FSE system, despite the differences in airport databases. Updating the FSE database is not really an option, simply because there are too many platforms to attempt to match. All players simply need to understand the FSE latitude and longitude coordinate system.
and any simulator location problem is easy to overcome.